yeah, the president sucks. Interest rates are through the roof. The economy is going to shit. And the moral fiber of humanity is quickly eroding. And both the left and the right are owned and paid for. Now, focusing on these outward problems won't fix your life. But you know what will? Cutting your wasteful spending, voting with your money, eating better and exercising, taking personal responsibility, being kind and showing more gratitude, focusing on personal development, being a role model to humanity, and making more money. See, oftentimes we want to point to the outward problems in the world, and we want to say that if only the economy was better, if we had a better president, if the interest rates and the housing market and the moral fiber and the values, well, those are all the outward things. Here's the thing about politics. Because there, we, we have a first-past-the-post system, what that means is like whoever wins 51% of the vote in this country gets a lot of the power, right? It's not like proportional representation where the Greens have 10% and you know Libertarians have 3% or whatever. It's just like you're all Democrat in power, now we're all Republican. Because of that, to win, you have to pick one of these two sides. Right, you have you have to choose. You can't just you can't just you, you can't just basically say I'm going to be uh, you know nuanced about it. You you can't vote for a third party that's throwing away your vote. Right, because of that, all of your beliefs have to neatly fit into the Democrat bundle or the Republican bundle. And so when you get into that tribe, uh, if you signal outside of that tri- out out of that bundle, you get attacked. Yeah. So it's literally. It's making you into an unclear thinker. It's making you into a muddled thinker. If all of your beliefs line up into one political party, you're not a clear thinker. If all your beliefs are the same as your neighbors and your friends, you're not a clear thinker. You're literally just, your beliefs are socialized. They're taken from other people. So if you want to be a clear thinker, you cannot pay attention to politics. It will destroy your ability to think. Oh, what What dread. (laughs) <laughs> Look, <laughs> most of modern life all our diseases are diseases of abundance not diseases of scarcity mm. right old times i may have starved uh i'm you know old times if i got sugar that was a wonderful thing i should have eaten all the sugar to get my hands on if i gotten a piece of news or gossip that was interesting data that would have helped my life and moved me forward um, if i'd gotten some brief amount of entertainment whether through video games or magazines or whatever that would have been good now it's all diseases of abundance. We are overexposed to everything. So the way to survive in modern society is to be an ascetic. It is to retreat from society. There's too much society everywhere you go. Society in your phone, society in your pocket, society in your ears. Mm. You're being socialized right now by listening to this podcast. Right. We're socializing you. We're programming you. Everyone's trying to program everybody. Mm. The only solution is to turn it off. The only solution is to turn it off and concentrate on your breathing. <laughs> The best bet for most people is to solve the problems that beset them in their own lives, the ethical problems that beset them, that they know are problems, and that they can set themselves together well enough so that they can then become capable of addressing larger scale problems without falling prey to some of the errors that characterize, let's say, over-optimistic and intellectually arrogant ideologues. I'll close well. Let me close with one thing. One of my favorite quotes from Carl Jung, it's actually a quote that I used at the beginning of my first book, which was called Maps of Meaning, was that if you take a personal problem seriously enough, you will simultaneously solve a social problem. And and this bears on, on your point, because it's not like your small family, even the relationship between you and your wife, is immune in some sense to the broader social problems around you. And so let's say right now there's tremendous tension between men and women in the West, and and that's certainly the case given the divorce rate, let's say, that would be some evidence. Um, And the later and later ages that people are waiting to become in, uh, to, 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 you know, enter into permanent relationships. There's a, there's a real tension there. And then if you do establish a relationship with a woman or, or a partner, but we'll say a woman in this particular case, um, you are instantly faced with all of the sociological problems in a microcosm in that relationship. And then if you work those damn problems out, if you can work them out within your relationship, then you can get some insight. It's not complete insight, but you can get some partial insight into what the problem actually is and get the diagnosis right, and you've moved some small measure forward in addressing what might constitute the broader social concern. And what's even better, 
you're punished for your own goddamn mistakes. And that's another thing I like about the idea of, of working locally, is that, you know, if I do broad-scale social experiments and they fail, it's like, well, tough luck for the people for whom they failed. But if I'm experimenting on myself within the confines of my own relationship and I make a mistake, I'm going to feel the pain. And, then I, and that's good, that's just, but it also gives me the possibility of learning. And so I believe that you do solve what you can about yourself first before you can set your family straight and before you should dare to try to set the world straight. Otherwise you degenerate into this kind of, you already talked about it, this shallow moralizing, this, well, I've divided my goddamn Coke cans up and now I can spend more money on new packaging at the <laughs> supermarket, which is exactly what the psychological research indicates that people do if they perform a casual moral uh, yeah. action. They immediately justify committing a less moral action because they've put themselves in a higher moral place. And you might, if you were a real pessimist, you'd say, well, that's why they performed the action to begin with. I think that's often true. That's associated with that shallow moralizing. Fuck yeah. All right, next one. A person obsessing over politics is a good indicator that their personal relationships are a mess. Unless they're financially invested in the political sphere, they're probably compensating for feeling powerless in their life. If you're looking for someone to save you, they're not going to save you, number one, and you need to actually do the work in your own life. Are there things that impact you? Yeah, there are. Should you be completely obsessed with finding the right person who's going to save you and all of society? Nah. Chris, how many people have you met that are obsessed with politics to a degree that they're not really involved in them? It's their sport. Yeah, quite a few. Twitter, right? <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah, that's a yeah. large part of what drives Twitter's business is arguing over who is going to save us best and who should be the enemy and who we outside and who we exile. And if, if they're doing that, that's, that's not done by people who are happy. Let's say it another way. The happiest people are not on social media yelling about politics. They might be on social media posting about their kids or they're going to be out with their kids or their family or their best friends. They're going to be building a life. They have so much more to do than just politics and they just navigate around the politics that are happening. So you think that it's a compensatory mechanism? Every single time I have seen someone come into my therapy office or now my coaching and start talking to me endlessly about this is so important, this person and this. I say, okay, let's steer it back to your life. They will steer it away from their life back into politics because they think that they are showing who they are by, by following the right things and having the right politics. And they think that that gives them value. And it also makes them feel safe because they can talk about it. And again, they're trying to be interesting. They're trying to stimulate. They're not even having a real conversation. They're not discussing it. It is just a compensation in every capacity. And they will not talk about the gaps in their own life. They want to run away from that. I wonder if a little bit of it is externalizing the locus of control that, look, my life isn't where I want it to be. My relationships aren't where I want them to be. And it's the fault of whatever's going on outside. It's the economy. It's because of social media. It's because of Silicon Valley. It's because of Im immigration or the war in Ukraine or the price of pharmaceuticals or estrogens in the water. Like putting the blame outward onto something that you kind of know that you can't impact yeah. is is actually a really perverse type of victim mentality because you know that you're not going to stop estrogens from getting into the water you know that you're not going to change the war in the ukraine this isn't to say that you can't have an issue with this you can't be aware of this you can't campaign for it and make changes for it but if it is the fundamental driving force in a life where you feel powerless and you point the finger of blame, that is the equivalent of pointing the finger of power. You say, the Ukraine, that's what has all of the power over my relationships and my mood. The, the, the economy, that's what has all of it. The, and these things, we're not separate from these things, but absolutely there is, I've, I feel like there is a non-insignificant cohort of people who use politics as an excuse to not engage properly with the challenges that they're facing in their life. Absolutely. If someone bring, and I'm not saying that the political pieces aren't a problem. Yeah, the economy sucks. Yeah, it does. But here's the real test is when someone is complaining about a political thing, ask them, okay, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? If they have an answer, 
they are taking control in their personal life. If their answer is we have to elect so-and-so, they will save us, or we have to shoot the other side in the head, or if, if that's their answer, no, that's not going to help them in any way, shape, or form. They don't actually have any control. Like locus of control, you nailed it. I love that. Their locus of control is externalized, and they are hoping someone will save them. It's it's very much the same of watching a sports team and say, and when the sports team wins, they say, we won. It's exactly the same thing. 